Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. November 25th, 2022. We're just minutes after the close here on this Black Friday. If you go now to theotrade.com forward slash BF, that is theotrade.com forward slash B as in boy, F as in Frank. You too, of course, can enroll for our Black Friday special, which includes the ability to lock in in an entire year of all access pass to Theotrade for $799. You know, Theotrade is the one thing that will not cost you more this year. We're going on our eighth year, and this $799 offer has been as consistent as we have. Do not let inflation impact your ability to effectively trade. Join Theo Trade now. You know, even if you're going to email us periodically, maybe bounce a few trade ideas off of it, it is worth it, okay? Because again, for $799 to have someone to talk to in the midst of your trades, hey, that's what we do here at Theo Trade. Listen, this might be our last time being able to offer at this price. So lock it in now, $799. Go to theotrade.com forward slash BF. With that, let's get to it. Let's get to this weekend's update. When will reality meet the markets? That's the topic of conversation here on this weekend's update. Let's get right to it, taking a look at the S&Ps. Of course, it is Friday, kind of mid through the trading day because it is a shortened holiday week. And this is a half a trading session here on this Black Friday. So to sum up your entire trading week, well, for the most part, we were grinding to the upside with a little bit of massively unchanged. Listen, not a huge amount of price action. If you missed anything this week, you wouldn't say you were missing much. I mean. What have we done in this marketplace? Well, I'll tell you exactly what we've done. Right up here, that was that big explosive move off of a CPI print. <gasps> Inflation is cooling off. What have we done since then? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> I mean, the S&Ps have been trapped inside of a range from roughly 39, okay, 39.50, we could even put 39.31 to roughly uh, 40.50. And we're still there. I mean, the central place of trade, somewhere right around like the 4,000 marker over here, but neither here nor there. Again, you're looking at a 30 day, one hour. Okay. One of the things that, of course, I, I want to do on every weekend update, but especially this one is, hey, there's no sense in looking back at this past week of trade. It's over. It's done with. Okay. What happened? Not much. We just kind of ground maybe a little bit higher, which we'll discuss here when we look at the SPX. But the big question in everybody's mind is the big Santa rally coming. And if you can kind of look back historically, December after December after December, and we can do just that. Decembers have been relatively positive other than maybe 2018 if you guys don't remember back in 2018 what are you new anyway if you don't remember back in uh, 2018 that was when the uh, the fed was aggressive yes the fed was aggressive in 2018 and we tanked we even tanked on christmas eve which was also a half a trading session nevertheless uh hey everybody's asking about the uh, the santa rally and i'm going to tell you something right off the bat i'm just going to jump up in the bullet points Okay, strictly my opinion, but at this point in time, we are far too data dependent to try to bank on any move. You just, you cannot bank on a bullish and or bearish move because we're completely and utterly data dependent. And what I mean by that is, okay, I'll just, jobs number is coming. The jobs number is coming. You know, eventually we're going to have to go through CPI and GP, you know, GDP. And then, and then the Fed, the Fed's going to be coming on December 14th. Oh my, there is, the world has become completely data dependent. And one of the things that I keep pointing out is when I ask, you know, when will reality kind of grip hold and kind of meet the markets is, it doesn't seem to matter. All right. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, we're kind of maybe grinding a little bit higher right now, but uh, if inflation, okay, even has a hint of picking back up, the marketplace gets absolutely slammed. I mean, just annihilated. And, okay, and maybe the jobs number, when good jobs can actually be construed as 
horrific for the marketplace or vice versa? What happens if the jobs number comes out and the jobs number is horrendous? It's bad. We are all hearing about layoffs right now. So if the jobs number comes out and it's really, really bad, is that going to be good for markets or bad for markets? People, the point that I want to make right now, we're just too data dependent. What I do want to do, though, is I want to look at a couple of sectors, okay, kind of backing us into this. So when I say that we're too data dependent, like if you're a person right now and you're saying, well, I'm really, really bullish or I'm really, really bearish, okay, all you are is one chunk of data away from getting annihilated. You know, I would not be leaning very heavily on whatever delta that you might think when I say delta. So I've got some negative deltas over here, but I'm not leaning that hard right now. I'm, you know, am I bearish? I am bearish and I am bearish a little bit longer term. But net net and try to point out again, I believe that we're far too data dependent to take any major directional bias right now. So one of the things that we're going to discuss here a little bit uh, in a moment is you know, one of the trades that are working right now. And uh, again, I'm going to kind of exploit some of those. Before I get there, I also want to talk a little bit about oh, just some of the, the major sectors, the indices, if you will. If I actually bring up the spiders on a year-to-date basis, they're down about 16%, right? Neither here nor there. And why are the spiders down, you know, some 16%? It has a lot to do with the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ's off about 28% year-to-date basis, okay? So you kind of know that tech is getting killed. Did tech hit a bottom? Ah, maybe on a year-to-date basis. As I said, we're data dependent. But what I want to show is, if you will, some other opportunities in here. One of the other opportunities when I think about this, and I'm like, wait a second. So the spiders are down about 16%. NASDAQ is getting killed, right? It's down almost 30%. And then I cruised over to the financials. The financials are only down maybe about 9%. Okay, well, that could be opportunistic if the marketplace was to go back into a fit of rage, that is sell side activity, okay? So I'm already trying to proposition to you, listen, we're too data dependent. You just can't take one big directional bias. But when it comes to sectors, you might be able to get into some nice sector specific positions. And when I talk about sector, you know, being sector specific, I'd be like, okay, well, the financials are outperforming in the S&P. So if I am going to short something, I'm going to have to short a sector that I believe is outperforming. So if the S&Ps were to actually come down and make new lows, it's got to do it on the back of financials because the Qs and the NASDAQ has already been beaten up pretty badly. That kind of logic would make sense. You can also turn around and say, well, you know, at this point, if you take a look at the uh, the energy sector, I mean, that thing's still up 60% year-to-date basis, 60% in the energy sector, right? Is it finally going to break? And one of the things is when I say break, and again, you can see already that I'm looking a little bearish over here, and I am looking a little bearish. As I said, you know, my longer, you know, I guess time horizon in here, I'm still absolutely like bearish in overall markets. In the very near term, I realize how data dependent, but I'm again, I'm kind of expecting uh, reality is eventually going to settle in. You know, you're going to get, again, a really bad jobs number or GDP number, and all of a sudden the market's going to go, wait, bad is bad, good is good, but everything lately is bad, so Santa is done. You know, this is this is going to get wild. So I wanted you to see the energy sector. This can be incredibly opportunistic from just simply a risk-reward per, uh, perspective. Now, I make no two ways about this. I have tried to short the energy sector multiple times this year, and I have been run over. Nevertheless, okay, you got to watch it. I'm not telling you to trade the energy sector. As I said, I, I shorted it and got run over. Nevertheless, you got to watch the energy sector because when the energy sector starts to break, I think it's pricing in a global slowdown. There's a reason I'm going into the energy sector. Number one, it's not necessarily to take a trade. Number two, if the energy sector is to finally break lower, it's pricing in a global slowdown, okay? And ultimately, that would be the beginning I would look at for reality kind of meeting the markets. And reality is, hey, you think about the S&Ps, the more we price in like an economic slowdown, the better the marketplace is actually doing because they're actually going ahead and saying like, wait, if we're going to have an economic slowdown, then that means the Fed's not going to raise interest rates as much which is total chaos when you start thinking about it in your head. And that's why I'm, you know, propositioning this entire weekend update is, you know, when is that reality going to meet the markets? I'm telling you, we're getting close over here. Other interesting opportunities right now, okay, exist around like retail. If you take a look at like XRT, XRT, all right, down about almost what? 
Oh, in line with like the NASDAQ, that's the XRT. I want to make a, a very distinct okay, impression on you over here, though. The XRT is, is retail, okay? But this is, again, much more discretionary. Whereas if you take a look at the XLP, the XLP is more like consumer staples. It's more like what you would think of like the Walmart. You realize that the XLP is only down about 1%. And when you look okay, at some of the consumer staples over here, this is an area, again, that I think that there could be a great opportunity. Imagine if you will, if you were like short XLP or and long maybe XRT to kind of mitigate the degree of the exposure. Or at that point, just short XLP. So again, I'm looking for opportunities as the marketplace starts to evolve a little bit and that reality kind of sets in. All right. Last but not least, on this particular front, I was also surprised to see XLU, which is massively unchanged on the year. I mean, it's what, 0.1%. Again, this is an opportunity we took advantage of up here in the uh, upper 70 handle and rode it down substantially, only to see uh, recouping okay, all the way back to unchanged on the year. The reason I'm trying to point out, again, this is the utility sector. You think, why are you picking on the utilities? Dividend yield right now is less than 3%, which is pretty incredible given the fact that, of course, the 10-year, the two-year, everything is above that. What makes people okay, love the XLU right now, and believe me, you got to love a sector for it to be massively unchanged in this year, okay? It's possibly they look at it as duck and cover for the dividend. It's utilities is going to continue to pay. But I think that also okay, holds a, uh, a huge amount of risk in the very near term. And that risk reward is, is pretty evident to the downside, meaning there's upside potential in here. Okay, But the downside potential could be absolutely phenomenal if that marketplace is about, again, to make that more strategic and bearish move in the near term. Okay. I want to further, though, that last portion of the conversation once again. In the S&Ps as a whole, it is incredibly difficult right now, okay, just to want to take a pure directional position, again, as it relates to the S&P 500. And the reason being is, as you saw with that CPI print, you're on the wrong side of it, you're going to get blown up, okay, by the like 200 points. That could be either direction. Okay. To the upside right now, we have, again, a specific level. If we're going to explode to the upside, again, on the data dependency, you're looking at basically 42.11. To the downside right now, 39.31. Where are we right now? Again, just trading just north of the 4,000 handle over here. So if you're looking at like upside potential versus downside, okay, it's not equal. There is, in the S&P itself, a bit more upside. That's one of the reasons I just went into a couple of the sectors there and we're showing you like, you know, if the S&P is, if, if you're bearish in the overall marketplace right now, okay, you don't go short the S&Ps. If you're bearish in the overall marketplace, afford yourself a better risk reward ratio. Go into something like the XLF. Afford yourself a much better risk reward ratio. Go ahead and short something like the XLP. Okay, that is why I wanted to give a degree of a sector kind of update over here, because if you think that a Santa rally is coming, well, that's great, but there is still, there's limited upside in the S&Ps, nevertheless, there's limited downside, okay? What holds, again, the key to this marketplace is some of the individual sectors. Nevertheless, okay, in the near term, those S&Ps, they are really data dependent. All right, another aspect, completely switching gears over here. One of the uh, the things that we've seen, uh, kind of a stark contrast of this week, has been none other than, well, volatility's on the move. Now, when people see, hear about volatility on the move, they're like, yeah, the VIX on the move, the VIX is going straight down. <laughs> I mean, the VIX has been on this straight tear. You know, other than maybe two, you know, consecutive days to the upside, uh, you have seen the VIX basically straight down since what, early October? All right. So the VIX, is it collapsing? I continue to point out week in and week out that if you looked at the VIX on a max chart, and I know it goes all the way back into like the 1980s, but even if you look at it a max chart, okay, since uh, even the financial crisis, we're still, okay, categorically speaking, at an extraordinarily high volatility level. But volatility is on the move, but I'm actually not referencing VIX. VIX kind of feels like it's like last to know right now. Skew and VVIX are changing. So let's actually jump over to VVIX. 
It's not a wild and woolly move yet to the upside, okay? Nevertheless, the VIX, which is volatility, the volatility index has been on the bid really like the last three trading sessions. I wouldn't count today, which is, you know, this Black Friday is a half trading session. I wouldn't count this for much, but here is the bottom line with the movement higher in VIX. Somebody's buying volatility in VIX, plain and simple. That Okay, with SKU. Now, SKU is only calculated towards end of day, but SKU actually flew on uh, on Wednesday all the way up to the uh, the 118, 119 level, which we have not seen SKU quite that high since, uh, again, all the way back to, well, when the VIX started to collapse. So bear in mind what SKU actually says. There's hedgers out there. They're buying out of the money puts. In order to finance those out of the money puts in the S&Ps, they're selling out of the money calls. Lo and behold, it doesn't always mean that they're bearish. It could mean that they're hedging. But hedging is indicative of, uh oh, there's risk to the downside. All right? So the big question right now, and you really want to watch this in the days to come, Watch short-term volatility, people. Watch short-term volatility. Short-term volatility, like the nine-day VIX, okay, the three-month, the VIX. Watch every volatility indication, because if they even have the hint of upside momentum, this marketplace, well, it could change the way you feel about everything in just a moment, all right? So with SKU and VIX, you kind of like on volatility watch at this point, uh, is, is that 20 level? Is that 20 level going to hold in VIX? Uh, if it does, again, has some upside, obviously that would uh, you know, mean some S&Ps selling back off in the near term. All right, as we've been doing each and every week, get your trade on some of this week's profits and losses. Listen, it's been a rather slow week, but um, you know, last week, the weekend update, we did talk okay, expressly about Google. Now just take a look at Google. The last week of trade, what has it done? The answer is not much. Sold off a little bit, bounced right back. Yep, yeah, well, that was enough, okay? That's all it has to do. And I, I wanna point this out because if you take a look at Google, that's order history for the last uh, seven days. But I will just open up, okay? Oh, it's about two weeks to trade. You can see opening positions and closing positions for Google. Uh, this was just a really quick three-day trade where Ultimately, we made just north of 30% inside of that three days. We're in, we're out, we're on with our life. It's a winning trade. Google, book it. Next one on the docket here in terms of some uh, winning trades that I actually pulled off this week was in the ZB. All right, what did I do inside of the ZB? I had covered, covered some risk. So I had other opening positions last week, which was uh, on the 18th, but uh, I covered these 117 puts. This is something that I've had on for a considerable period of time. In fact, I uh, don't mind. I'll go ahead and open up even like 90 days, well, in this case, 190 days. But if you take a look at these 117s, I uh, had originally rolled those 117s, but you can see, put them on for uh, one and 60 ticks, closed them for 10 ticks. It's a grand slam home run. So uh, yet selling premium, okay, rules the day. Once again, the sale of premium in the bonds has, it's just been phenomenal. Every single position, and ironically, I opened this for 190 days. Everything we've thrown at the bonds this year, every single position we've thrown at the bonds this year has worked. And there's an interesting irony to that. And the irony is I was selling puts in the bonds when it wasn't fashionable to be selling puts. And this little bounce recently helped us just enough to actually pull out every single trade on the bonds. In fact, uh, again, we can even go back. Now look, we're you know over 300, uh, 330 days into the year. Okay, you can see every single position, all right, opened and closed on this uh, in this bond marketplace effectively. To open, to open, to open, to close, to close, to close, to open, to open, to close, to close, onward and upward from there. All right, limited range in this marketplace. It's just been phenomenal for premium sales. One of the things I was introducing people to last week, of course, was the catapult. If you take a look, I expanded out the catapult a little bit uh, this uh, this past week. But these uh, S&P options and futures, oh, one of which is up some 45%. The other one is, for the most part, massively unchanged. The Tesla position is up some 10%. The Netflix position is up 34%. The Amazon position is up 8%. Everything we're doing inside of Catapult is working. And Catapult, okay, the design here is to sell premium inside of the S&P options on futures to finance spreads that I want to take in Tesla, in Netflix, in Amazon. And again, we've continued to kind of build on that logic of Catapult. Last, last aspect here in terms of get your trade on, I also, of course, uh, opened up some uh, new inflection point 
spreads, inflection point spreads. I'm just going to go ahead and bring this up. These are the micro options on futures. And you can see we have quite the little inventory that we've built now inside of the Theo Theta small portfolio. And for the most part, what have we done? It's a nice little hedge for December 30th. Okay, a sale of premium and uh, two extra calls sold over here. So we have a very, very mild negative delta inside of the Theo Theta small portfolio. And we'll update you that as, uh, as time goes on. But again, it's a brand new inflection point spread that I opened this week. Why did I open one this week? Because the skew picked up. Okay, and as soon as the skew picked up, it really enabled me to sell options premium that much more effectively. So Catapult is working through and through. The Google trade is on and off. The ZB trade is closed profitably. And again, we've got a limited range inside of the marketplace, which has just been phenomenal for the sale of premium. Last but definitely not least, as we do each and every weekend update, talk a little bit about expected move in the markets. What do we do this uh, this past week? Well, first and foremost, this past week held okay approximately all right a seventy two dollar expected move, meaning that the week we just passed through, which was roughly three and a half trading days, we were expecting approximately a seventy two dollar move higher or seventy two dollar move lower. What did we get? People almost to a T right to the seventy two dollar marker. In fact, you know this is one where like we did not hit the upper edge. Look. The upper edge of the expected move was roughly at 40, okay, 37. The high on the day, 40, 34. Close enough for you? And you're looking at a $4,000 product that missed a line that we drew on the screen, okay, a week ago by three points. So what are we expecting this next week of trade? Reminder, this next week of trade, well, it's going to be a full week of trade. So we just went through, again, we just went through three and a half days in the trading week, okay, What's next week looking like? About a $76 expected move. So this is one that, all right, I'm going to give you a little bit of a cautionary tale over here. Okay. Here you have three and a half trading sessions with a $72 move. You're about to actually see five full days and they priced in how much more volatility? Nothing. You got a $76 move coming up plus or minus for this next week of trade hands and feet inside of the vehicle at all times, because I'm going to tell you right now, I would expect, every ounce of me would expect us to smash the expected moves of this next week. Why? I mean, think about all the data that's coming out. And for those of you that are not calendar geeks in here, I mean, you got everything from like some GDP to CPI to jolts to the Federal Reserve, you know, Jerome Powell speech. All right, and that's before their blackout period. You got the jobs number. Oh my, it just goes on and on, as I said. Okay, it's too data dependent to want to take a big bias inside of the S&Ps. Okay, your savior in these next couple of weeks very well could be some of the individual sectors. Well, that's it for this weekend's update here at Theo Trade. Hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at Theo Trade. Bye-bye.